Hey everybody, welcome back to Paul's Model Works. And I'm back just making a real quick video to show you guys my progress on the Lindbergh Dodge, or Dodge Charger. Um, and just tell you guys a little bit about how that's going and uh, some of the different stuff with the kit. So anyway, uh, let me get this out of the way. Uh, to start with, uh, the body, I have the body all cleaned up. Um, this is really an excellent kit. There's not a lot of mold lines, um, sink holes, or anything like that. Of course, the body's not primered yet, so once I do primer it, there may be a few imperfections that show up then, but just real quickly looking at it, I don't see uh, much of anything that will need to be fixed right off the bat. Um, for those of you that uh, kind of question um, my process on painting, uh, my first step of the process is just to take this body, look for any mold lines or imperfections or anything like that that might be on the body, um, and clean it up. And then if you look real close here, uh, you can see that it's kind of got a dull finish to it. That's because I've sanded it uh, down with like a 12,000... Uh, 8,000 and 12,000 grit um, sanding cloths just to uh, smooth out the body and get anything off of it. Um, but that's where I'm at on the body. Not a whole lot of progress. Most of my work has been spent elsewhere. Um, I do have the motor built. Um, and this kit has a very nice motor. Um, excellent detail on it and just a lot of parts that go into it. Um, you can see here, uh, there's that uh, serpentine belt. Um, very nice belt and pulley setup for, uh, you know, for a kit uh, model. So very nice. Got uh, some of the plumbing on it there already. Uh, exhaust headers. Still got to paint the starter. And there is the fuel or the oil pan. Um, and then on the top here. Uh, you can see um, just right up here on the top of the valve covers uh, it's got all of the detail on there um, those are all separate pieces on this side it comes with a dipstick uh, which is really cool and then you've got your fuel uh, lines there uh, one thing I did do that this kit didn't come with is uh, if you look real close there you can see uh, the wires um, on that side and then they are on this side uh, I added those in just to give it a little more detail um, and I'll probably be doing a little more deta detailing to it as well once it gets uh, inside of the uh, engine bay um, I have the uh, radiator fan uh, fan shroud that's all been finished um, I started painting on the uh, exhaust. Um, again, that's going to be all detailed, uh, weathered, and everything. So that's just kind of the base colors. And then most of my work has been spent on the chassis, uh, which you guys can see there. Um, obviously, since it's a police car, well, I guess not all police cars are white, but the Tulsa County Sheriff cars, which are the ones that I'm going to be replicating, um, are white. So um, that's why there's white on the bottom of that. The camera is not picking it up too well, but uh, I sprayed like a gray primer first and then did the overspray on the edges just to give it that, um, you know, overspray look. But this does have a really nice chassis. Um, you can see uh, there's the rear suspension um, and the, uh, rear, the rear end and everything. So very nice um, detail on this. I mean, a lot of this rear suspension is all separate pieces, lots of pieces that go into it. So um, you know, a lot of detailing that you can do. I still have um, some detailing I need to do on that just to get some of that to pop a little bit better. But that's the rear end, and then the front end um, is up here, and that looks really nice. It's got going to have posable suspension or opposable steering 
so that'll be great. Um, and then you got your shroud here. Uh, I do have the um, uh, transmission in and everything. And then I've got the brake and fuel lines painted in because um, they come molded into the bottom of the kit. So very nice chassis. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing some weathering to that. I'm going to make it look like, you know, it's been driven every day out on the beat and everything. So a lot more still to do to that one. But uh, that's pretty much where I'm at so far um, on the build. I'll be uh, painting the wheels and getting those on. Um, and then probably we'll start moving on to the interior. And then uh, I'll, be doing, I'll be doing the body probably last. Um, I still have to print my decals uh, and everything for that, um, which I have them. I just need to print them out and size them and then actually print them on the decal paper. So, but it's coming along nicely. Um, thankfully, I've been having some time to actually work on this one. I've not been so busy lately. So, um, this one will hopefully not be an extended project and will uh, just, you know, take me my normal amount of time to build it. Um, but I'm really excited about it and I'm thinking it's coming out really nice. Um, you know, and really, it is a really, really good kit as far as detail goes. Um, I've been really happy with that. I did want to point out a couple of uh, discrepancies that are in the uh, instructions. Um, and the first one is the second step. I mean, in the very second step, there's already something wrong with it. Uh, the instructions are okay. They're not the most clearest. There's a few places in there where it's kind of difficult to understand what's going on. Um, but on the second step, this top piece right here that goes onto uh, the top of the block, on here they have it backwards and I did make the mistake of putting it in backwards and I had to pull it all apart and everything um, but if you put this in backwards then once you put the intake uh, manifold on there um, it actually will not fit uh, you can see right here that they have the large hole in the front but then on the second step the large hole is in the back so if you ever do build this kit um, you know remember that on that second step make sure that you don't put this top piece in the way they have it uh, flip it around so that it's in the other direction. Um, and then on the fourth step uh, where the serpentine belt is, um, when you're putting these little pieces on it's kind of confusing where they go but they actually go on the back side of the belt and this makes it look like they're going on the front side for some of this stuff so uh, that's a little bit confusing as well. And then I have one more thing that I have ran into so far. Uh, you know Hopefully there won't be any more, but as I go, I'm kind of coming across these things. Um, the next one would be uh, right here, and these are the heat shields um, for the exhaust, uh, this one and this one. Um, and again, they've got those in backwards. This one actually goes on this side, and this one goes on that side. Um, so make sure when you put those in, which they won't fit into the holes anyways, but just you know, heads up, those are backwards as well. Uh, but that's all I've ran into so far on this kit that, um, you know, is kind of a problem on the instructions. And that's why it's so important to test fit everything that you do before you actually glue it together and paint it or anything like that. You know, test fit these parts and as you're going, see how they fit. Um, you know, because if you get something glued in backwards, especially uh, if you've got, you know, it's not going to be really easy to take out or anything then you can run into some problems and some frustrations that you can just save yourself if you just take the time to test fit a little bit. Um, also, I did want to show you guys a couple of things that I picked up. Uh, yes, I got a couple of new kits, and I said I wouldn't buy any more, but uh, these ones were a really good deal. Uh, first one is the uh, Monogram 55 Chevy Bel Air Convertible. And these kits, uh, I don't know exactly where these stores are but there's a store uh, here near where I live called Atwoods it's kind of like a, a feed store kind of a farm feed store uh, I don't know I'm not into the whole farming country thing um, but I did find out that they sell kits there so I went the other day and happened to go down their toy aisle um, and so they had these kits and they were on clearance uh, marked down to this one was marked down to 894 and then the second kit that I picked up uh, was the uh, monogram classic cruiser the 37 Ford sedan 
and this one was marked down to uh, 594. Now the cool thing though was that anything that was on clearance with the green tag also had an additional 50% off. So this kit I got for like two dollars and some change, and then this kit was like four dollars and some change. Uh, so crazy good deals on both of these kits. Uh, I'd actually been wanting to pick up one of these 55s, and then um, have not really seen a whole lot done with these, but it looked like a cool kit, and you know, for two two dollars, three dollars basically, it couldn't pass it up. So if anybody knows if they you guys have an Atwoods in your state or near where you live or something like that, go check them out. Uh, I believe the sale is until the third, and that's when uh, the fifty percent is good till. So um, you know they might have some kits. I don't know. Check it out. They did at my store. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much everything that's going on here uh, and everything that I've gotten done on the Dodge Charger. I'll probably do some more work on it tonight or in the next couple of days. We'll see. But I will uh, keep you guys posted and talk to you all later.